Welcome everyone to the Reparations Study Group, episode 13, What Does Reparations Look Like? And I am here with our national chair of the Uhuru Movement, Jesse Neville. Uhuru. Uhuru. Pleasure to have you on here. And we have Ali Aiello, the USM National Membership Chair. Uhuru. 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 Um, so I want to appreciate everyone who's tuning in. And um, of course, it's, I want to appreciate our leadership. So if you're new, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, and Uhuru means freedom in Swahili, we work under the leadership of the Afghan People's Socialist Party. And if you're Burning Spear newspaper, which is the news organ of the Afghan People's Socialist Party, you go to page eight, you can see the National Central Committee of the Uhuru, uh, uh, the, the National Central Committee of the Afghan People's Socialist Party with Chairman Amalia Shatella front and center. So I want to appreciate and salute Chairman Amalia Shatella, definitely, mm -hmm. who has been fighting for his people since the 1960s, Chairman of the Afghan People's Socialist Party and Afghan Socialist International, and whose recent book, Vanguard, The Advanced Attachment of the Afghan Revolution, really summing up this political period, political report to the, um, the seventh Congress of the Afghan People's Socialist Party, um, really recommend reading it, really lays out the um, strategy of the Afghan liberation movement moving forward. Um, but you can get it at burningsphere-marketplace.com. And I also definitely want to appreciate Ona Zanea Shatella, who is the deputy chairwoman of the Afghan People's Socialist Party and leads all of the economic work. We are reading her article today, um, Building a Liberated Worldwide Independent Anti-Colonial Economy, on page nine of your Burning Sphere newspaper, which you can also get at burningsphere.com. Um, and this is where all the reparations that we raise in the Uhuru Solidarity Movement goes to. So it's being, this is a very exciting episode. Um, I also want to appreciate all of the National Central Committee of the Afghan People's Socialist Party, um, including Akile Anai, who is the Director of Agitation and Propaganda, which includes being the Editor-in-Chief of the Burning Spear newspaper, this Afghan internationalist, um, socialist, a revolutionary newspaper. And um, last but not least, I want to appreciate Chairwoman Penny Hess of the Afghan People's Solidarity Committee, who leads all of the solidarity work under the leadership of the Afghan People's Socialist Party whose book is Overturning the Culture of Violence right here that you can get at Burning Spear Marketplace. Um, definitely recommend getting a copy and making yours as well loved as your <laughs> Um Get out your highlighter, get out your, your pen, just start, <laughs> get out a piece of tape. Oops. Um, and um, <clears throat> really delve into the history of our culture of violence uh, from which we benefit and um, why we owe um, reparations. So I'm getting some message. Okay, good. I'll make sure that it was hearable. Right. Um, oh, all right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Near our mics. Um, so that's a little, little bit of an overview and saluting our leadership. Um, I want to, you know, open up to uh, Trinesi and Ali Ailo. Any, um, any comments before we start going into today's topic? Uhuru, good to be here on the reparations study group. And I want to salute Jackson here. Let's give a round of applause for my comrade. He's consistently leading this study group every single week. It is so important. I want to join in saluting our leadership, the leadership of the Uhuru movement as a whole, including the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Amali Shatella, who, as Jackson said, has been fighting this fight for over 50 years, fighting for the liberation and unity of Africa and African people everywhere, as well as Deputy Chair Onis Nechitala, whose amazing column is what we're gonna be studying, yes. and uh, Chairwoman Penny Hess out in St. Louis, who was who is known as the first white person to join under the leadership of the African Revolution, and who has continued to forge that stance ever since as the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee. And I also wanna salute Ali Aiello, yes. our membership chair, because I'm sure Ali will talk a little bit more about this, but we are in the midst of the reparations recruitment week of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. We are on the war path right now, recruiting new members of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement every single day. We had an amazing web show on Monday night with Chairman Amalia Shatella called Joining Reparations, in which he laid out the whole deep history and analysis of how he came to the conclusion that there needed to be an organization of white people that worked under the leadership 
of the African Revolution as a strategy of the African Revolution to extend the African Revolution into the heart of white society, into the belly of the beast, with a specific strategic mission of unleashing the stolen resources hoarded in the white world as a consequence of 600 years of slavery, genocide, and colonialism, and you know, reversing the flow of parasitic capitalism, turning those resources back into the hands of African people from whom they were stolen to begin with. So this is an amazing time to be alive and to be a member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And if you are not a member, join, 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 join. You can do that by going to uhurusolidarity.org slash join, become a member, become a sustaining member. I do uh, $25 a month uh, to the work of the Uhuru Movement, to the work of the African People's Socialist Party. Specifically, I'm so inspired by the Black Power Blueprint and uh, the projects that are happening on the ground in St. Louis, where you know Ferguson inspired the world. You had Palestinian freedom fighters that were throwing tear gas canisters against Israeli uh, terrorists, uh, you, you know, U.S.-backed Israeli soldiers that were sending messages uh, to the um, people in Ferguson saying, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. You had Palestinians who were having tear gas canisters thrown at them by the Israelis who were sending to the people in Ferguson messages of solidarity as they watched the Ferguson Police Department unloading tear gas canisters on African people there. And they were sharing, they were coordinating with each other on how you deal with tear gas. You know, mm -hmm. this was the a line of communication between the Palestinians and the Africans in Ferguson. And Ferguson inspired the whole world. And the chairman went to Ferguson and he asked the question, yes, resistance, yes, protest, yes, be in the streets, yes, march against oppression, but towards what end? Mm -hmm. And he answered that question with the Black Power Blueprint and so much of what Deputy Chair talked about. So anyway, it's an honor and we have to we have to join. You know, if you're on the fence, I hope that by the end of this show tonight, you will get off the fence and come on over and join the winning team under the leadership of the African Revolution. Yes, and you do not have an excuse. I've posted links in the there video you go. comments. You got your links. So you can uh, click on uhurusolidarity.org slash join and become a member right now. You can share it with your family, friends, etc. Right. Comrade Ali. Yeah, should I use it? Oh, and yes, you should. Here you are. All right. I'm just going to hold it. That's fine. That's cool. Yes. Uhuru. Well, I'm really honored to be on this episode of Reparation Study Group. So thank you for having me. And I also want to join in saluting our brilliant leadership, the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, um, Chairman Omani Shatella, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, and the entire Central uh, National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. And also want to salute Chairwoman Penny Hess, um, yes. who is a brilliant leader who has fought in the white community and who has set an incredible for so long, and who has set an incredible example of what we as white, how we as white people need to act in order to make a future where we can create a world where no one lives at the expense of anyone else, and that's the reparations to African people. Um, and I also want to salute the chair. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement, Jesse Neville, and uh, Jackson Hollingsworth for continuing to hold this show um, every week. And yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm really honored to be on the show, and I'm excited about our reparations recruitment drive that we have going on. Uh, I think Jesse, you did an incredible job summing it up. You know why you should join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, um, and you know the importance. Of, of joining and it, it really is like if you want to make a concrete change in this world mm -hmm. if you actually want to do something about it you know yep. you you know you know from past experience it's not just about voting you know that you know it's just it's not just about protesting because you've seen protesting and you've seen where it's gotten you but you know that there has to be something more out there that needs to be done that needs to stop police violence, you know, that needs to put an end to the way that this this world is being destroyed. Um, and we're giving you that answer, and that's through reparations to the Af to African people. Um, that's through joining the Uhuru Solidarity Movement and being under the leadership of the African working class. So I also really want to encourage you to join um, and join, you know, this is, our, this is our membership brochure, and front and center we are the reparations organization of white people in solidarity with black liberation. 
If you want to be part of the reparations organization, if you support reparations in any shape, way, or form, you have to join this organization because this is the reparations organization. So I'm really excited to get into today's article, um, which I think you know ties to a key component of um, membership and what the Afro Solidarity Movement is all about. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jackson Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, Ali. So I just want to appreciate everyone who's tuning in right now. Uh, we have um, Leah Fifield from Minneapolis, Virginia Wilson from Louisville, Kentucky, Kristen Forthen from Spokane, Washington, Renee from Philly, um, Santosh from St. Petersburg, Florida, and many others. So um, if you have not commented, you know, go ahead and we want to appreciate and um, give you a shout out. And um, once we read our article, you know, feel free to call in at 727-531-9171 with any questions you have, comments you have, an announcements, you know, if you're becoming a member, you know, you can say why you became a member um, or why you upgraded, etc. I just up upgraded myself uh, from $15 a month to $20 a month. Um, very happy to do that. Um, and you can read along with us um, on page nine of your, oh, it should say March issue of your um, Bernie's Green newspaper. I'm so critical for that. I'm not proofreading that, but it's page nine. Um, and um, we'll, we'll start. So this is divided into three different sections. So I propose that we you know start here and then just go around with each section. And um, so this is called Building a Liberated Worldwide Independent Anti-Colonial Economy, ODC for Office, Office of Deputy Chair, Political Report to the 2020 African People's Social Party Plenary or Planning Conference. So this, this is from uh, uh, Deputy Chair Onazanea Shetela, and uh, she presented this um, this um, this a, a month or so ago to the African People's Socialist Party's first plenary of the Seventh Congress. And she leads all of the economic work of the Uhuru movement. And so this is a very very important uh, piece that we're reading today. And um, so I'm going to turn it over to Ali Ayello, who read the first um, couple few paragraphs, and then we'll we'll switch over and cool. then switch over. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Sounds good. Okay, so this is um, from the column Office of the Deputy Chair by African People's Socialist Party Deputy Chair Ona Zine Yeshitela. And uh, this is coming from the political report uh, from the first uh, plenary to the seventh Congress. So I want to acknowledge my leadership, Chairman Omali Yeshitela, and salute his re political report to the African People's Socialist Party Plenary 2020 Vanguard Up unity of theory and practice. I also want to acknowledge the African People's Socialist Party, National Central Committee, members of, yeah, members of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement, and our guests and observers of this first plenary of our party's seventh Congress. I'm thrilled to be here to bring this plenary, the vision and strategy from the office of the deputy chair for building a liberated worldwide anti-colonial African economy that the chairman is fighting for now. Yeah. All right, the little subheader is uh, we are at the point of no return. We are on a mission. We must understand the political significance of our economic institutions and campaigns. Together, they represent the unity of theory and practice spoken of in the theme of this plenary, the, theme, the unity of theory and practice. Um, our theory calls for the total liberation and unification of Africa and African people worldwide. Liberation and unification are a, necess are a necessity for freeing the productive forces of Africa and our people. Our economic institutions represent the practical face of our African internationalist theory of liberation. We must be able to see everything we've built as one single seamless anti-colonial international economy stemming from one revolutionary philosophy. Colonial capitalism is a parasite that feeds off the resources of the colonized. When the colonized African working class builds our own economy, we are carrying out a revolutionary act. And again, this is from W. Sher on his page, tell it. Um,
here we are. Uh, we negate the colonial economy and replace it with our own. This act of creating our own independent anti-colonial economy deprives the parasite of the host that is necessary for its existence. The African working class has to be self-governing. That is the political theory that gives meaning to our economic work. That is what we mean, uh, that is what we mean when we say that politics is concentrated economics. Our political line is reflected in our economic work and our economic work is tied to the defeat of colonialism and neocolonialism. The chairman stated in the political report to our seventh party Congress, Vanguard, the advanced attachment of the African revolution, quote, our most important task is to spread African internationalism throughout Africa and the world. Even the development of organization must initially be designed to facilitate our spread of African internationalism among the African working class in every village, community, workplace, school, and university, even prisons where our people are concentrated. The development of the ideological, political, and organizational capacity of our party will provide us with the army of genuine revolutionaries, those who are most concerned with the rescue of Africa and our future from the clutches of imperialism. This is more important than the need of individual Africans to improve their immediate situation. This is what our economic work is about. We are at the point of no return. It is time to understand that we are about building a worldwide anti-colonial economy that will destroy colonialism that is rooted in the economy of is, that is rooted in the in economy of enslaving African people. Our people have nothing. We are in poverty from Texas to South Africa. We've been locked into a colonial capitalist economy. We have been producing for others. Now we are in the process of freeing up the productive forces of Africa to produce for ourselves. We are creating an independent, worldwide, anti-colonial, liberated economy. This is the significance of the different institutions and campaigns that we are building. We are fighting to see the whole vision of where we are going and what part each of us plays. The chairman's vision of an economic future is for African people to be free from colonial domination. The chairman laid it out in Vanguard. The party's office of the deputy chair, ODC, led by Ona Zene Yoshitala, is involved in some of the most consequential work of the party. It is moving in a solid Garvey-esque manner to demonstrate the unity of economic and political work. Comrades, all our political work is designed to overturn our relationship to colonialism, to become totally free, independent, and prosperous based on applying our labor and wit to production for ourselves. Our struggle is to liberate the productive forces of the African nation, something that is impossible under foreign domination. We have employed the anti-colonial strategy of creating dual power, a power of the people under the leadership of our party as part of the process of pushing the power of the colonial capitalists into irrelevance. The greater the independent power of African people, the less is the power of the colonizer. Indeed, this is what democracy looks like for the colonized. This is the path to self-determination, the highest expression of democracy, end quote. And that's a quote from the chairman, Chairman Amalia Chatella. At this plenary, we are going to a higher level to envision and carry out the plan for an international independent African economy under the leadership of the African working class. We need to see ourselves as growing a global anti-colonial economy in the process of becoming the ruling class. We have to get out of our shopkeeper mentality. We need to see that everything we do has profound significance. And I quote the chairman again from Vanguard, quote, our objective is not simply to set up offices and retail shops throughout our communities. This is a part of the decolonization project. This is a part of the process of contributing to the further development of concrete dual power that includes the most meaningful capacity to feed, clothe, and house ourselves, our self-determination. 
which have been robbed from the African nations since the advent of colonial slavery and capitalism. True liberation cannot be really achieved without neutralizing the economic and political domination by the white nationalist colonial power that controls every aspect of our lives as subjugated people. The party's vision is for us to see ourselves as building a liberated worldwide independent anti-colonial economy. That means we need to up our game. Vanguard up, build the independent anti-colonial African economy. I just really want to appreciate uh, this article. Debbie Chair Onizene Tella, who you know, and the chairman has highlighted, including in his last um, Sunday study, mm-hmm. how you know the office of deputy chair, how you know she and how her office operates is to be emulated by all aspects of the Uhuru movement, including the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, and um, you know all of us, you know have you know benefited from this economy that you know white power imperialist colonial economy that um debbie chair talks about in this article and we can be a part of a new liberated african economy by returning those stolen resources and um i know that we all have a lot to say about that Uh, i first want to appreciate um casey matthew who's tuning in from st louis or her casey um who um, is the chair of USM in St. Louis and is the USM and African Health Solidarity Movement uh, regional rep uh, for the Midwest. Um, I want to appreciate Tama goldberg from St. Petersburg, Florida. Tama, Uhuru. Uhuru. Much love for you, comrade. Um, I know there's other people watching as well. Um, I want to encourage everyone to share this um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, Text the link to your mom, to your brother, you know, to the, anyone you think would be, you know, anyone you think needs to hear this. Everyone needs to hear this. Um, so, in terms of, of this article, obviously, there's a lot to to say here. Um, and you know how significant it is that the African People's Social Party is building an independent, anti-colonial. African economy. And in fact, the movement uh, sums up has a slogan that the economic and political are one. They're the same thing. And so um, I personally, you know, have heard, you know, um, white people say to me, whether at an outreach table, you know, whether at, you know, dinner, etc. Well, you're just talking about money. Like, well, yeah, like <laughs> it's all built on that. Um, and we know that the average white family has um what what is it like 22. 22 times the wealth of the average black family that um, a white child um u- uses is given you know more resources than you know 32 colonized children African children combined um the av- the um average assets in boston you know the average average African family has a reserve of eight dollars, while white community has like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. Um, so That's we see crazy. this reality every single day, um, and we, we statistics are helpful, but honestly, I don't think we even need statistics. We can just see it for our with our yeah. very eyes. Um, and so. Um, we you know, made a pitch for, for membership at the beginning of this video, but I really want to encourage you, um, whether uh, even if you're already a member, you know, to participate in the recruitment drive that we are having right now. Um, it is really urgent that we, you know, we win our community um, and win ourselves to a deeper level to, um, to defect from white power that it, we see is destroying the world yeah. every single day this world capitalist economy um that is you know, spearheaded by the u.s um that is destroying rainforests you know um fires in australia the, the coronavirus and like all these different things um that is white power that mm-hmm. is capitalist um economy right there and we can be part of destroying that building dual and contending power with that um, through returning all the resources that we have access to, to the African liberation movement. Um, so 
uh, with that, I wanted to open it up to um, Chair Jesse, Ali, your thoughts and comments. And also, if my um, anyone watching this, you can call us at 727-537-9171. And um, I will bring you into this to make your comments, questions. Um, and I'll also read um, any comments that you leave on YouTube. Sure, hurry up. Sure. Well, um, I really appreciate this article. I think it's it's an amazing piece, and the whole document that Deputy Chair put together for mm -hmm. the plenary is like mind blowing. Yes. Um, and I I think you know really you can't say enough about the power and leadership of of Deputy Chair Onizne Shatella, and of course the chairman sums it up quite a lot in the last political report that he wrote, and in other places as, as Jackson mentioned. Um, and I think. Uh, it's really important to understand what Deputy Chair is talking about and what the chairman has been talking about lately in terms of the, the line in there that says that, I'm going to try to remember, I'm going to try to start remembering. Right. So yeah. that the greater the power of the colonized, the less is the power of the colonizer. Mm -hmm. The greater the power, power of the African working class, the less is the power of the white ruling class. And that the struggle to build an independent African economy is part of the process of the African working class becoming the ruling class, becoming the socialist ruling class in a world after capitalism, in a world in which capitalism has been defeated and in which African people have reclaimed control of their resources. And uh, the chairman uses this phrase, the negation of the negation. You, you all have heard that recently, right? He's, yeah. been, he's been talking about that. So I wanted to just talk about that for a second because I feel like that's what Deputy Chair is, is delving into here. Um, that the first, he says the negation of the negation because the first negation is what happens through the rise of capitalism. The rise of capitalism comes into being, is born through negating the independent economic activity of Africans, of indigenous people, through negating even the, the national identity or and, and, and consciousness of being a people, that the white identity comes into being through negating that. So that's the original negation is the, the birth of capitalism and the sustaining of capitalism through the ongoing assault and, and disfiguring and, and rape and pillage of African and colonized people around the world. And the negation of the negation is the rise of the revolutionary African anti-colonial workers economy, because of an African working class economy and a parasitic capitalist white power economy are not going to share the same universe, at least not for long, because <laughs> one it's not yin and yang, you know, <laughs> like they need each other. Like one can only survive at the expense of the other, yeah. literally. Yes. Like white power can only survive at the expense of the lives of African people, the theft of the resources of African people. Black power can only succeed at the expense of white power, mm -hmm. at the expense of, of oppression, at the expense of a system built on exploitation and slavery and murder. So in order, you know, that's why uh, the chairman says that dual power is dual and contending power. It's not like, well, you know, screw the U.S. government, we're going to build our own. It's screw the U.S. government, we're going to build our own in the process of overturning right. the power of U.S. imperialism. Mm -hmm. And um, like the chairman says, the the black people's grand jury that happened in St. Louis, mm -hmm. where they tried Darren Wilson and found him guilty, that wasn't the mock trial. That was the real trial. The mock trial was the one the U.S. government, the, the one that white power held where they exonerated uh, Darren Wilson. The only difference is that they currently have the power to enforce their verdict and the African working class does right. not. So that's why it's a struggle for power. And if you look throughout history, you can see examples of any time, because African people are brilliant and the, in, the ingenuity and creativity of even in the most dire situation of exploitation and imposed poverty, the ability of African people to to gather scarce resources and make something out of it mm -hmm. is well known. And you, there have been situations like two famous examples most people have heard of, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was actually referred to as Black Wall Street, yeah. where African people in the 20s 
when lynching was the national pastime of white people, yeah. you know, managed to actually create a relatively prosperous uh, situation for themselves, business and things like that, and banks and insurance companies and things like that that actually benefited African people. And the way that white people and white power, which are often synonymous throughout history, yeah. uh, responded was by burning it to the ground, literally burning it to the ground and killing hundreds of people. And um, the U.S. government actually waged their the first ever aerial strike on U.S. soil with the bombing of Tulsa, Oklahoma, wow. um, which I think was in 1921. I might be mistaken on that. And then the other example that we know about is Rosewood, which yeah. is right here in Florida, not that far from here, actually, uh, where it was a similar situation. And we don't even have to go that far. Look at the gas plant. You know, sometimes the destruction there's more than one way to destroy a community. And in Tulsa and, and, and Rosewood, it took the form of, uh, you know, white people with torches and, and whips and nooses. And in St. Petersburg, Florida, it came in the form of a city council vote that yeah. saw an entire black community raised to the ground and replaced with a baseball stadium. Yeah. Um, and now African people in this city are catching hell every single day. So you've seen that. And what was missing was the, was power that African even when African people have been able to create something like their own economy without power they're left defenseless against this violent vicious white power colonial social system that thrives at their expense which is why this is not about building a business or uh, one institution or something like that as the chairman says this is about this is about the African revolution this is about the African working class seizing state power and actually becoming the ruling class of a socialist world in which the workers control the value of their own labor. Um, so anyway, that's not, a, not any of the notes that I <laughs> plan to say, but I just think that's extremely important. So that's the negation of the negation. And, and I, I just want to end with this and then I, we can open up. But the chairman said that dual power, so we understand dual power. That's a really important concept. It's, important, it's an important concept because what we do as the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, we are raising reparations towards the dual power strategy of the African People's Socialist Party. That's explicitly what we're doing. So our work is actually part and parcel of a dual power strategy. It's not even like fundraisers for dual power. We're part of creating the new economy because we're under the leader, we're an extension of the African People's Socialist Party that goes into white society to also participate in, at the expense of white power, bringing those resources back into the hands of African people. So we're part of that strategy. So dual power is when the African working class begins to create its own institutions of self-government and, uh, and power and authority over their own lives and resources that are in contention with the power and authority of the colonial government. That's what it means. And um, the chairman has pointed out that dual power is temporary because at some point or another, one side has to succumb to the other. And that's why, ultimately, white power has to be destroyed. Capitalism has to go. I mean, the, I think it's pretty obvious from what's yeah. happening right now in the world that the human species doesn't even have a future if this social system is not done away with. Right. So, um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, first, I want to appreciate that, Chair Jesse, very strongly. Um, and just want to say how, you know, it's such an honor to be a part of this movement. And... Um, you know, the, the Uhura Solidarity Movement, um, if, if it's not clear already, we are not a separate organization from the larger Uhura Movement led by the African People's Social Party. It is not some, you know, charitable thing. Like, Uhura Solidarity Movement was formed by the African People's Social Party, led by it. So we, we are a part of the strategy of African people reclaiming their full resources and claiming power. So when when we do something in the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, it's the African People's Social Party doing something for their liberation. Um, and we have some comments from Kristen Forthen, um, who says, we have comrades here that don't necessarily know the theory of African internationalism well, but they fight daily to be in unity with the African working class and they love the party's work and USM. I appreciate these studies because it helps us learn to think, speak and live in an anti-colonial way. And Tama Goldberginini says Uhuru. Well, I, I have nothing but 
the deepest love and appreciation for uh, the USM comrades in Spokattle, yeah. as we call it, mm -hmm. uh, Spokane and Seattle. Amazing comrades out there. Salute to Kristen, who's actually heading that up right now right. Um, and does so much other work in the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. So shout out to all Uhuru. of you. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yes. Um, Ali, you had some comments. Yeah, I I just, I thought that was a yeah. great summation, Jesse. I really appreciate that. And uh, yours as well, Jackson. And, and I, uh, yeah, I think just like the title of the article, Building a Liberated Worldwide Independent, oh, independent um, anti-colonial economy, like that is, that you don't see that anywhere else. No mm -hmm. one else is talking about that. Like you have to understand that. Mm -hmm. No one else is doing that. No, like there's other organizations that talk about single issue problems yeah. and, you know, while you know those single issues are important issues, if you want to get at the root of it, you have to be an anti-colonialist because the fundamental contradiction is colonialism. Like like Jesse was just summing up, it's the negation of the negation is the colonialism is the is the foundation of it all. And this is, I mean, I just I think this is so uh, brilliant. And you know, Debbie Chair talks about. Yeah, I love the way that this uh, political report was titled yeah. The Point of No Return. Yes, yes. I mean, I hope you get that. Like, that is saying the African working class is not going backwards. Yes. We've established ourselves. This is we're here and, and we're moving forward. And you could you could hop on board or you could go down with the sinking ship. You know, it's it's really clear. And I, I think I thought it was just a, a brilliant title in the way that you know, the Uhuru movement has established itself over 50 organizations and institutions worldwide, you know, with just people all over fighting for the Uhuru movement. And, um, you know, our our three principles of unity, you know, this is our, our beautiful membership brochure. And if you want some of these membership brochures to go out and recruit people that you know, you should let us know. You can email info at UhuruSolidarity.org. We will send some of these to you, but it has our three principles of unity in it. You know, one, we're under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. We're a strategy of the party, right, um, to go into the white community. And number two, our principle of unity is uh, to organize in the white community um, for reparations. So that's our job. We go into the white community and we organize for reparations. And three, we uh, so we stand for in solidarity with African self-determination. And what does African self-determination look like? But building a liberated anti-colonial African economy. I mean, that's what it's all about. So your your membership is a du is directly supporting this this process. And um, like Jesse was saying, the reparations is the is the fundamental piece of um, of you know of the way that we support this, this uh, anti-colonial economy. And all of our members are reparations paying members. So by by joining the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, you're you're jumping off the pedestal that you know white people sit on <clears throat> that white people sit on. You're you're take your the the line in the sand has been drawn. You're taking that step over the line and you're saying this is no longer going to happen in my name and I want to support a new world. I want to support this future. And, um, you know, this is real. This is not just something that we're talking about that we hope one day or we wish for one day, but it's on the ground. And you can see it in, you know, in the furniture stores that we have in Philadelphia and in Oakland. You can see it at the Fruit Foods and Pies booth. Like, you can see it in the Black Power Blueprint. It's, it's, um, it's amazing. You can see it with your own eyes. And if you want to be a part of something like that, you can be. You definitely can be. And you can do that by joining the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Um, so I just want to, again, encourage you to join and understand the significance of why you're joining. Um, because it's not just about throwing your dollars to another charity organization. Right. We're not a charity. We, we all recognize we have a stake in this process. We have a stake in 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 joining um, with the African working class because mm -hmm. clearly, you know, as as evident by what's happening in the world today, um, you know, the, the future of white power is not looking too bright. So uh, I just wanted to say that. And uh, yeah, 
Her, thank you, Ali. And um, how does one become a reparations recruiter if you're already a member, or even if you're not? Um, and what does that entail? Oh, that's a that's a that's a great question, Jackson. Um, so to become a, a USM recruiter, so if you're already a member, you want to recruit new members. First off, you can go to ahurusolidarity.org slash recruit. I want to appreciate Jesse for making that beautiful page on our new USM website. Yeah. If you haven't seen our new website design, you should go check it out at ahurusolidarity.org. And you can sign up to become a reparations recruiter there. And uh, there, are plenty, there are lists of different activities um, you can do. And one of them, you know, is phone banking. You know, we have people um, that you can contact uh, to become a member. But I also really want to encourage you to look in who who are you surrounded by? Um, friends, family, coworkers, all those people who um, who you th who who you see who you know they see they see a problem in this world and they want to do something about it. They want to change the world. They want to be a part of changing the world. Um, and you should talk to them about the Hru Solidarity Movement and about joining the Hru Solidarity Movement. If you sign up as a reparations recruiter, we'll give you a call and we'll talk to you about um, you know best ways to ooh, best ways to approach people and uh, you know any materials we'll help you out with any materials that you need. Um, to, uh, to win people to this organization. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you, Allie. Let's go ahead, Trudessi. Uh, we had a comment from Virginia Wilson in Louisville, Kentucky, um, all in caps, yes, exclamation mark, so appreciate these studies and appreciate USM. Colonialism must go. It's revolutionary responsibility to pay reparations. And Kristen Forthen says, everyone deserves to see this political stance and the opportunity to join and she made a little heart. Yes. Oh, I don't, I don't need the mic, I have one. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. I, yeah, I just appreciate um, this discussion and I wanna echo the call if you're not already a member to join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, you get a very special button, give yes. back that says, I stand for reparations now, solidarity with African people in the U.S. and around the world. And uh, let's say you're already a member, so you're thinking, oh, man, I wish I could get that button. Well, you can. <laughs> Upgrade on hrusolidarity.org uh, slash join. Upgrade your membership level, and we will send you a button. I'm very much looking forward to, to my button. And there you I go. encourage everyone to uh, get your button. Absolutely. Um, and wear it proudly. Um, as a form of outreach and also just like to, you know, um, exemplify that stance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, I think, you know, the chairman has talked about this, so, you know, people needing permission to come out of the reparations closet, you know, so out. that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they'll see you and go, wow, like I now have confidence to step out my own reparations closet. Pride so, ahead, Yes. Well, I, um, yeah, I also wanted to make a couple of comments on um, coronavirus. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of it. Yes, so, maybe you've heard of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I, because, I mean, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is like the average uh, kind of like, um, what do you call that thing on a heart um, monitor? Oh. That, that thing. <laughs> for Be like, major here, don't ask me. Yeah, well, for for like the for like the capitalist economy, um, the stock market, and it has plunged today to the lowest point since 1987. I think it went down like 2,300 points today, and uh, this is like on you know hasn't happened since the late 80s. So this is a really serious situation. I think over 100,000 people have been infected with coronavirus. I'm not sure what the death count is at at this point, but I know. I know it was climbing into the thousands. Yeah. And um, of course, it's starting to really affect the United States. And um, you know, schools are shutting down, and it's affecting concerts are canceled. Oh yeah, I mean, it's it's affecting even the work that we do because we want to be out there amongst the masses. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, right now there's a lot of things that that uh, are being canceled that we would normally do outreach at. And also, we don't want to put people in harm's way. So mm -hmm. we've had to change some of our plans. And, and like this weekend, we're going to be doing a lot of phone banking, doing a lot of social media uh, to get people to join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement to win people. So, um, But what I really wanted to say about the whole coronavirus thing 
is that the whole crisis around coronavirus reveals a lot about this horrible uh, social system and world economy that we all live under of parasitic capitalism. Imagine if this was happening under a world socialist government under the leadership of the African working class. It would not be going down. First of all, it probably wouldn't have happened in the first place. But even if there was some kind of virus that started spreading, the concern, the needs of the people would have been placed in the forefront. The ability for testing the uh, people to find out if they have it is like out of reach or wildly expensive for people uh, in this country. Um, you know, it's the whole thing is is upside down. The whole thing is like, how is this going to affect the ability of the everyday business of the capitalist economy to function? That's really what the rulers of this country are concerned about. They're not concerned about human beings. They're not concerned about uh, the 100,000 children in New York who are homeless, who when their schools close are not even gonna have a place to go to eat during the day. They're not concerned about that at all. And I mean, it's just, it's so clear. It just shows what a filthy, horrible social system we live under. And we're not even gonna get into tonight uh, the possible explanations for where this uh, virus originated mm -hmm. because uh, they want us to believe it was just some kind of freak accident. A bat flew into a market in China or something to that effect. Um, but, you know, the history of U.S. government biological warfare is well documented and, and quite expensive. But we're not even going to get into that tonight. But I think uh, to really understand that, you know, the whole question of health care um, and how all of that works in this society is based on profit. Like it's not there for the needs of the people. Hospitals do not exist to help people get cured from their sicknesses. Medicine, the field of medicine does not exist to help people get better. Uh, it actually uh, needs sickness to exist and to be permanent for it to continue to make a profit. So anyway, I just think like, it's just another example, like this, this economy, is has no redeeming value. Capitalism has no redeeming value whatsoever. And you know, we are the reparations people. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement, we are reparations. We are the people who we are the white people under the leadership of the African Revolution who any topic you throw at us will will answer with, well, that's why we need reparations to African people. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's not because we're just uh robotically, you know, um blur regurgitating some uh rehearsed line. It's because really that is the solution. The solution to every single problem on the planet Earth is to be found in the struggle and eventual victory of African people for national liberation and self-determination. The negation of the negator of human beings and human life is the thing that will lead to a future for everybody on this planet. And so coronavirus, the economic crisis, the environmental crisis, uh, the spikes in suicide and alcoholism and drug abuse, even in the white community uh, in this age and every other contradiction that we see in the world, the solution is reparations to African people. So like Ali said, we have a stake in this. It's not charity for two reasons. One, it's not charity because charity, first of all, the word charity is that you're doing something nice for someone, right? You're doing something out of the kindness of your heart to help somebody. And I'm sorry, there's nothing nice about giving something back to somebody that you stole it from. Yeah. That's not nice. That's just something, that's just right. That's just the correct thing to do. It's not nice to say, okay, we're gonna, we, we, we owe you trillions of dollars. So we, we wanna start paying that back. That's not a nice thing to do. That's a, that's a historical responsibility to right. right a historic wrong. So that's the first reason. Secondly, three reasons. There we go. Second reason is that uh, charity, quote unquote, the, ch the institution of charity maintains the status quo. Charity, there's like most charity organizations are uh, uh, receive funding from individual white people and they make billions and billions and billions of dollars, not from big corporations and funding and stuff like that. So um, there are I think there are white people out there who actually want to do something. And they're not even big donations. People just give what they can. I think there are white people out there who want to do something, who see the poverty and oppression of African people, who want to do something about it. And all you can find is charity, which takes 
what might be an honest sentiment on your part and converts it into something cheap and hollow that just props up the same system of oppression that you were reacting to in the first place. Give a dollar a day to Rwanda, to a child in Rwanda, et cetera, et cetera, and trivializes the suffering of African people to, uh, to alleviate only perhaps your suffering in the form of some of your guilt right. being lifted. Yeah. So nothing changes. I mean, charity organizations have existed since the dawn of capitalism yeah. and it hasn't changed a thing. Um, so that's the second reason. And the third reason is because, um, is because charity is, is based on the assumption that it is something we're doing for somebody else. And although we do have a moral responsibility to rectify the relationship that we have to African people, uh, we also have a, an interest. We have an interest in doing that. And um, the other night we were talking with the chairman on the web show, which was amazing. If anybody hasn't watched yes. that, please go back and watch that on our YouTube channel. Um, but the chairman had this, this quote back in the day. He was talking about the struggles that went into forming the Solidarity Committee. And he was saying that there was this white communist group that was like, white people are never going to work under the leadership of the African Revolution because and white people are never going to uh, are never going to join an anti-colonial struggle because they're never going to work against their interests. This is a communist, a white communist. So the chairman has always pointed that out. Like, what an incredibly revealing statement for a communist right. to make. This is supposed to be somebody who is like all about workers of the world overthrowing capitalism right. and somehow thinks that it is in the interest of white people to side with colonialism. Right. And what the chairman has shown is that it's in our short term interests. It's in our short term. In the short term, we are feeding ourselves and uh, and you know enjoying social wealth and prosperity and opportunity on the pedestal of slavery, oppression, colonialism, genocide, et cetera, et cetera. In the short term, yeah. It's to our benefit, but in the long term, it's not. In the long term, African people are going to be free. They're going to take back their resources. This economy is going to go much deeper than it, it is into the hole than it is right now. It's going to go all, all the way six feet under. And if we want to have a future on the planet Earth, we shouldn't be claw, you know, clawing <laughs> onto the Dow Jones. Yes. Like, sorry, that is a death sentence. I don't want to go down with that sinking ship. I want to be on the side of humanity. So it's in our interests. And anyway, there's a lot you could say about that. Last thing I'll say about it, I promise, is that even in the short term, it's in our interests in some ways. It's in our interests in the sense that, yes, we benefit from it materially. We are enriched by it. We have comfort and we have the ability to uh, live a happy, meaningless life on the pedestal of imperialism. But at a at the cost of our of any kind of deeper meaning in our lives at the cost of our own humanity that's the price we pay to live on the pedestal of the oppression of african people yeah. it is a very very uh hollow empty and horrible thing to be a colonizer it really i think it is i mean it's terrible it's terrible to think about like oh uh, bringing children into this world and the idea that like a white child, uh, the, the ability for a white child to like go through the stages of life and everything is only possible because of how many funerals African mothers have had to attend for their own children. Right. Like that there's a dialectical relationship between those. That That's sickening. That, that should make us sick. So it's not in our interest in any way to be in cahoots with our own ruling class. We should be doing everything we can to bring them down. And that's why we're gonna be waging a campaign to target the money sector, to target the CEO, billionaires, the capitalist ruling elite, to demand that they pay the ultimate price of reparations to African people because everything they have in their Fortune 500 stock portfolios uh, has come at the expense of African people and they need to pay up, and they need to pay up to the Black Power Blueprint and the independent, liberated, worldwide, anti-colonial African economy that Deputy Chair Onzenea should tell us about in this article. Mm -hmm.
I would really appreciate that, Chair Jesse. Um, yes, and so if you have not already, join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement at uhurusolidarity.org slash join and become a reparations recruiter to, you know, bring, you know, all your you know, loved ones, your, you know, your white community, your family you know, onto the right side of history and to have a future in this world. And I want to give a big salute to Chichara Masimba, who is tuning in. Who is is, uh, the Director of Economic Development for the Black Power Blueprint. Um, incredible member of the African Eagle Soldiers Party, so salute. Um, we have some uh, comments. Um, Virginia Wilson um, talking about the stock, the stock market, et cetera, and uh, the barometer for capitalism is tanking, she says. Um, yep. She also says, Uhuru uh, Comrade Charwa, salute the work of the Black Power Blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about reparations, that is the responsible thing, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Kristen Forthen says, oh, I was reading a 1985 with Burning Spear from the Florida University archives okay. about a struggle in APSC that was really awesome. And she also says, salute to Charwa Masimba as well. Um, yes, all the Burning Spear newspapers are archived now through the Gainesville uh, University. I'd like to read that. Can you send me a link to that? Yeah, Kristen, uh, <laughs> you can do that. All right. And um, someone whose uh, YouTube username is Roots Cause, nice username, says Uhuru. 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 Awesome. Yeah, the, the struggle in 1985 was about reparations. And that was when, um, as Penny talked about on our Reparations in Action show, uh, this last Tuesday, um, that was when the party uh, really won the struggle with APSC and members of APSC, including chiefly among them, Penny Hess, uh, were able to really unite with what it means that this is not a pair. We're not a parallel organization. It's not like the African People's Socialist Party does their thing and then we do our, our thing in the white community. We are a constituent organization of the party. We are African internationalists. Our leadership is Chairman Amali Shatella. Our worldview is African internationalism. Our slogan is Uhuru. Our struggle is the struggle of African people to be free. And that there's no separation. We, we're a function of the African revolution and white society. So, um, and, and the way that manifests is through reparations. So yeah, that, that is a really important. I would like to read the article that Kristen's talking about. Awesome, and she said, we'll email it. Um, Thank you. Root cause is Diane Tournay. So appreciate Diane Tournay, our Diane Tournay. organizer in Gainesville. Uhuru. Um, uh, and says, just for clarity, University of Florida, so people can find the archive. Yes, so the University cool. of Florida, Gainesville. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so we have about four, three minutes left. Um, so if you have any pressing comments, questions, now's the time. We'll do our best to answer it in time. Um, and any closing remarks, Chair Jesse or Ali? Both. Yeah, I I just, uh, I thought that was, I thought that was great, Jesse. Yes. Um, you know, I thought that was really powerful. and. It talking about you know how reparations is the solution it's mm -hmm. the solution for everything and just like in a in a simple way you know people ask you could tell people ask why is reparations the solution for everything it's a simple math equation because reparations deals with capitalism mm -hmm. right reparations puts an end to capitalism to destroy capitalism is the function of reparations and this system was built on the capitalist system was built on the oppression of African people, right? So the first, the first commodity of the capitalist system is African people. So if it's the oppression of African people that created this capitalist system, then it's going to be the liberation of African people that puts an end to this system. It's just, mm -hmm. is that, is, it's that simple. That that's why reparations is, is a function of that because the system is parasitic. And it, it needs to destroy, it needs to continue to feed off everything um, in order to, to be able to survive. So if it's, if, it's the, if it's the oppression of African people that created the system, it's going to be the liberation of African people that, free, mm -hmm. that, that puts an end to this current system. And that is why we say road to socialism is painted black and why African people must lead. So... Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna make it. I know I know we made like five calls tonight, but I just want to really put it out there. This is our this is our reparations recruitment drive. This is this is it. This is where we are going all out to win you 
to join the Accru Solidarity Movement and for you to win other people that you know to join the Accru Solidarity Movement. And we really want you to be a part of this organization because we know that you want to change the world. And we, you know, we know we're, we know that this is the solution and we know this is the future for you and for the rest of the community. So go to AccruSolidarity.org slash join and become a member today. Thank you, Ali. Really appreciate that powerful statement. Uh, we are at time. Um, Chair Jesse, anything before we close out? Uhuru, I think this was a great discussion. I appreciate Comrade Ali and Jackson. Um, as always, I uh, appreciate Jackson for leading this study. And I think these studies are extremely important so that we as white people can see the world through the eyes of the African working class. And the reparations study group is the means by which we can become African internationalists. We're not white, we're not African, we are white. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we are not African, but we can be African internationalists because we can adopt the ideology and the understanding and the analysis of Chairman Amalia Shetela and the African People's Socialist Party. And that is how we're going to change the world. And as the chairman says, uh, philosophers have made much ado about explaining the world, but the thing is to change it. So that's what we're doing here tonight. And that's what you will do when you go to uhurusolidarity.org slash join and become a member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement or upgrade your membership mm -hmm. so that you can receive a wonderful Reparations Now button and so that you can contribute a little bit more resources every month to the incredible work of the Black Power Blueprint under the leadership of Deputy Chair. Um, and Virginia Wilson says, thank you, Jesse, Jackson, and Ali. Great studies, so important, thank you. And I want to thank you and everyone who's tuning into this. Uh, I want to have our chant, unity through reparations. reparations. And um, time is out now, so appreciate everyone. Uhuru. Uhuru.